Good morning and welcome to the joint service of Peace Lutheran Church and St. John's Lutheran Church. We welcome you. Today is Holy Trinity Sunday, and we're thankful to God that you were led to worship with us today. Your presence truly is a worship as a gift from God, and may He bless our worship time together. I am Pastor Mike Grobelch, and I will be leading the service this morning. I'm one of the pastors at Peace Lutheran Church in Pico Rivera, California, and the pastor at St. John Lutheran Church in North Long Beach. If you would like to receive copies of the bulletin sermon prior to our service, please email your address to us at P-E-A-C-E-L-U-T-H-C-H at gmail.com. You may also send prayer requests uh, that way or by sending us a DM on either of our two Facebook pages. I ask that you join with me in the responsive reading during the course of the service. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Whoever will be saved shall, above all else, hold the Catholic faith, which faith, except everyone keeps whole and undefiled, without doubt he will perish, he perish eternally. And the Catholic faith is this, that we worship one God in three persons and three persons in one God, neither confusing the persons nor dividing the substance.
Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us your servants grace to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity by the confession of the true faith and to worship the true unity and power of your divine majesty. Keep us also steadfast in this true faith and worship and defend us ever from all our adversaries. For you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, live and reign one God now and forever. The Old Testament lesson for today comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter six, beginning in the first verse. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim, each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to the other and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. And I heard a voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I, send me. These are the words of life. For there is one person of the Father, another of the Son, and another of the Holy Spirit. But the Godhead of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit is all one. The glory co-equal, the majesty co-eternal. Such as the Father is, such is the Son, and such is the Holy Spirit. The Father is uncreated, incomprehensible, and eternal. The Son is uncreated, incomprehensible, and eternal. The Spirit is uncreated, incomprehensible, and eternal. So likewise, the Father is almighty, the Son is almighty, and the Holy Spirit is almighty. And yet these are not three almighties, but one almighty. So the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. And yet there are not three gods, but one God. So likewise, the Father is Lord, the Son is Lord, and the Holy Spirit Lord. And yet there are not three lords, but one Lord. For we are compelled by the Christian truth to acknowledge every person of the Godhead by himself to be both God and Lord. So we cannot, by the Catholic faith, say there are three gods or three lords. Our epistle lesson for today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, beginning in verse 14. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed him, Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know, this Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosed the pangs of death because it is not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand and that I shall not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence of, about the patriarch David that he both died and was buried and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would send one of his descendants on the throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, 
nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, you have received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit. He has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend to the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. These are the words of life. gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you have come from God as a teacher, for no one can do these things, these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, truly, truly, I say to you, Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born again when he is old? Can he, not, he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born, can he? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Do not be amazed that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from and where it is going. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said to him, You are the teacher of Israel, and yet do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and testify of what we have seen, and you do not accept our testimony. If I told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven, but he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And whoever believes in him will have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Stand up, stand up for 
Lord Jesus, the trumpet call again. For to the mighty conflict in this his glorious day, ye that are his now serve against unnumbered foes. Let courage rise with danger and strength to strength oppose. of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and redeemer. As we look at the account of Isaiah in today's Old Testament lesson, he reveals it's not only a vision, but it is an event that will set the direction for the rest of Isaiah's life. We find him responding to God's call. And in the last verse, we hear, here am I, send me. But that's not how or where the vision began. It begins with Isaiah finding himself in God's heavenly throne room, which is pictured as being a temple, a place of worship in Jerusalem in Isaiah's days. How do, I, how do we know that the vision is in God's throne room in heaven? because it's described as high and lifted up, and because it's populated with heavenly beings, which we call the seraphim. And yet we know that it is also in the temple, because the vision has the elements of God's train, God's robe, filling it. Also, later one of the seraphim takes a coal from the altar, which is the altar of sacrifice which itself is found only in the temple on earth, not in heaven. So how can he be in two places in once? How can God be in both heaven and on earth? Well, if, we, if he can, if we write this account off as simply as a vision, or we can try to delve deeper and discover a deeper reality here. When we gather for worship, where is God? Where is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit? In heaven or on earth? Why not both? Those aren't just nice liturgically correct words that I say in the beginning of each worship service, that we begin our service in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They are an invocation. They are calling for God's presence in our midst. And this passage that we have here from Isaiah as well as others, confirms that reality, that God himself is truly present. And so you don't get the sense of 
awe and reverence when you walk into this building as Isaiah did in his vision? Or maybe do you get that sense that when you go up to the sanctuary, which was the architectural design of this building to remind us of, of going up to worship and meeting with God as his people did of old, our guess is that the architectural subtlety may never have been pointed out to you before. It's not a practical matter. But if you're trying to keep the building's footprint small and the ceiling in the sanctuary tall, then the sanctuary has to go over something. It has to go over the foundations. And, you know, in some cases, if you want to keep that footprint small, the sanctuary goes over offices and other meeting space. In fact, Frank Lloyd Wright designed a Jewish uh, synagogue in Chicago that was built with a sanctuary on the second floor, purposefully and intentionally. This was to make the space high and lift it up and instill a sense of awe and reverence when the parishioners came to meet. That same idea is behind the design here, but we'll delve into that a little bit more later. Now, our guess is if you were to walk in here and see a vision of God high and lifted up with seraphim flying around singing his praises, you and I might act and react a lot like Isaiah did, first being dumbfounded, struck silent, and then struck by the awe and majesty of the moment. And then Isaiah was profoundly struck by the realization of that he was a sinner, that he had no business being where he was, seeing God, for to merely look on God would cause one to die. But notice, Isaiah was in God's presence, and yet he did not die. Why? Because of the sacrifice that had already taken place on the altar, the sacrifice that had been already offered for his sins and the sins of all mankind. And as for the angel who took the coal from the remnants of that sacrifice and touched Isaiah's lips, that sacrifice was applied particularly to him. Your guilt is taken away, your sin is atoned for. What other sacrifice could that sacrifice signify other than the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, for which Isaiah, he was yet to come? But yet, what do we see here? With his sins atoned for, the new man in Isaiah steps forth to answer the Lord's question, whom shall I send? Out of utter thanks and gratitude for his salvation, from, the, from death, Isaiah answers, here am I, send me. You gave me my life. Now I am willing to offer it back to you. Lots of other things are going on here at the same time. First of all, notice Isaiah doesn't tell the Lord what he's going to do for him. He doesn't say, oh, thank you, Lord. Now I'm going to do this or that for you. No, he offers to go wherever the Lord sends him and to do whatever is required. Isaiah volunteers to be a human being with a job not unlike that of a seraphim, to go at God's bidding and to speak the Lord's word wherever he is sent. Here am I, send me. It's a lot different response then. Oh boy, is it ever good to be here. Let me make three booths, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, as we hear, hear Peter offer on the mountain of transfiguration. For Peter, God's message was, stop, listen, then do. Not so for Isaiah. We see awe and reverence reflected in all the humility wrapped up in an offering back to the Lord, the only thing of which Isaiah had that was anything worthy of God, and that was his life, which the Lord had just redeemed. This touches us on several levels. 
But let's go back to the on reverence again. We know that on reverence cannot be taught, nor can it be learned. On reverence, it must come naturally from the heart. Now, there are outward manifestations of on and reverence, as well as inward ones. For the seraphim, their on rever reverence was reflected in what they were saying. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. In that, we see the very beginning gave rise to a response to God according to their nature, to serve him, and in this case, with their voices. At the beginning of this passage in Isaiah, in his natural human state, he reflects the sense of awe and reverence by realizing that he is a sinful human who has no natural place in the holy presence of God. Isaiah says, I am ruined, I am undone. He cries in mortal fear of God's just wrath over sin. However, once the coal from the sacrifice for his sins has touched his mouth, his awe and reverence are manifested in a new man. In God's question, whom will I send? God answers unswervingly, send me. The fear of God's wrath is gone, and it has been replaced by a grateful and thankful attitude towards God. So what about you and me? The lessons of this vision is that because of what God has done for us in Jesus Christ, we stand with Isaiah as new creation. The coal from Christ's sacrifice has touched us in and through the waters of baptism. Our sin and guilt has been taken away, and so we need no longer fear God's holy and just wrath for our sin. Jesus suffered that penalty in our place on the cross, and once and for all paid the price that we could not pay. So you see, on this Sunday, we are also joined, the seraphim, in their hymn of praise to him who was and is and is to come. God in three persons. The God who says, who will go for us? That us being Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And there's another thing we should note. Awe and reverence are reflected in action. Isaiah wasn't called to build anything. His call was simply to speak for God, but that meant he had to go, go where he was sent. Sometimes we tend to think that our Sunday morning experience is the sum and substance of where our awe and reference for God is lived out, but that isn't true. The call that has touched your mouth for a reason. Each of us has a calling a vocation by God's design. His question is, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Was spoken to you at the font. And now your life story to this point is the story of his life in you. Where has it taken you thus far? Today, we as the body of Christ in this place are going to be reviewing where he has taken us so far as a church. And we're going to be talking about where we hear him calling us to go, where he is sending us, and how we see him providing for our needs to get there. We pray that after we finish our examination of our corporate call as the body of Christ, each of us will prayerfully consider our own call to serve him, just as the seraphim do freely, joyfully, and thankfully, in line with our nature and our gifts, and in all humility. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. The Father is made of none, neither created nor begotten. The Son is of the Father, not made or created, but begotten. The Holy Spirit is of the Father and the Son, being neither created nor begotten, but proceeding. So there is one father, not three fathers, one son, not three sons, 
one Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. And in this Trinity, none is before or after another, none is greater or less than another. But the whole three persons are co-eternal, together and equal, so that in all things, as he has said, the unity in Trinity and the Trinity in unity is to be worshiped. Let us pray. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, you grafted us unto the vine of your Son. Prune us and cut us off from all sin and dead works, that we may always draw life from your Son and produce the fruits of faith and good works. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, your only Son came into the flesh to bear our sin and to be our Savior. Protect us from all false teaching and the spirit of the Antichrist, that we may always confess Christ to be our only true God and remain faithful to him. Lord, in your mercy. Father and teacher of all truth, guide teachers and catechumens in your word that they may increase in understanding, faith, and love for Christ. And the lamb led to the slaughter in our place and risen from the dead. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, you hear and answer your children in their hour of need. Give aid to those who we name in our hearts. Grant that they may bear their crosses with faith, ever looking to you, and so fix their hearts where true joy is found. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, you are love and always reveal your love through your Son. Grant that all who come to you to your feast in love may worthily eat of Christ's body and blood, so that whoever abides in his love forever abides in you and you in him. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, you are gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Hear and answer our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ. And your saints shall bless you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord, remember us in your kingdom as you teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his perfect peace.
peace and serve the Lord. I'd like to thank the following people who made this taping possible. Uh, unfortunately, our ASL interpreter was taken ill. Uh, I can report that she's at home and feeling better. Uh, and we pray and that she will be able to return to uh, this ministry as soon as possible. Uh, I'd like to thank our director of music at St. John's, Rory Selden, and our director of music at Peace, Katja Richardson, who provide the music. Without them, we could not have uh, this, uh, this service. And yes, we do have in-person services. Uh, we have services at Peace Lutheran Church uh, at 9 and 11. Our 11 a.m. service is in Spanish. We're located at 9412 Shade Lane in Pico Rivera, California. If you're a late riser, uh, St. John's Lutheran Church may be for you. We have a worship time at 12.30 p.m. where ASL signing is available most Sundays and we're located at 6698 Orange Avenue in North Long Beach. We hope and pray that we'll see you at a service. May God's perfect peace be with you this week and always. And as a courtesy, if you would, if you like this video, please hit like, subscribe, and click on the little bell so that you get notified of new Bible studies and services as they're posted. Thank you.